guys, what's up? All right, all right, all right. It's Double Deuce back. Rise and shine, it's carburetor time. So today, on my video, I'm trying to figure out why I cannot get this to run properly. So you're going to see that hole right there, and we'll get to that in a minute. So grab your favorite smoke, beverage, and popcorn, and hang out with Double Deuce today. I was going to tear some carbs apart. Do a little measuring. You know, what we do. Here we go. So, this is the new Toyin pump style carburetor. So, the one that came with the engine did not work. So, I tore it apart. So, we're going to look at that today. And you're going to see this tiny little hole here. This is a Traxxas carburetor off a 15 engine. Look at the size of that all. Huh? So, <laughs> when the engineers were building an engine, they said, hey, let's take the biggest engine we could make and put the smallest carburetor on it possible, said no engineer in the world. Hey, hey, don't take those, man. Okay, yes, you'll get fuel mileage, you'll get, I guess, uh, a steady idle, you will not get no performance out of something this tiny, nothing. Like, I thought I would put this on there, and you know what, it doesn't fit the hole. So that means the intake manifold needs to be bigger. So, one of the biggest problems I have found with these engines, okay, other than the Sisson engine, because I had this Traxxas carb in my Sisson Flathead L4, which ran very well. And, uh, you know, they do need to, I guess, attend and pay attention to needle sizes, quality control, and a lot of other things here. So, anyways, let's get to the carb that I tore down and it's pretty unique inside but it's SM all small I mean <laughs> I don't know you know the the first toy in L400 had four carbs on it you cannot put these four carbs on this engine because of the starter right here now I did do some thinking if I took the starter bracket off, the old L400 that goes on the other side where the header goes now, because it's in the way, and I put it over here, it's going to put the starter way down below, which would give me room to put the four carbs on there. And yeah, they were a pain in the butt to tune, but once you got them tuned, they stayed there, you know. So another issue that it brings is... Now, if you want to put this inside a scale frame, you're going to have to alter the frame because the starter motor is going to be in the way. Or you're going to set the engine up way up high. So, anyways, let's get to the car by tore down and we'll look at it because it's the same one as this one. These are all the same. So, here we go. Now, I've tore this one apart so you'll be able to see the inside of it. This is what it looks like all together. You know, it's a nice, well-built carb. However, it's just too small. Too small. Actually need um, more than one. I'll put it that way. It's like Lay's potato chips. You, you can't have just one. Now, first thing I'm going to get to is the size. All right? Let me turn on my mic. Okay. Inside this hole here, which feeds the engine, it comes up to be <laughs> it's actually about 530. I'm squeezing it a little too hard there. 530 is the hole. 530 millimeters. Okay, now if you go to the other side and go in here, 
starts off at 789 670 and goes down to 5 545 okay now the tractor's carb the opening hole is 640 okay yeah 640 the hole that goes inside the intake manifold is 612 okay so and it widens because it's tapered in and out where this one has steps inside it it starts off with a, a wide opening with a bevel down to another bevel down to another bevel into this tiny little hole here now that could be a lot bigger or an oval port in my opinion so now I'm gonna sit down here we're gonna look at how it operates okay let me shut my micrometer off Put that over here now <laughs> when I first got my gas Toyin L400 version this nipple here was loose and I was getting air in there so I thought that was what it was but it wasn't so I tore it down then I realized how small the thing is and I looked at the directions on the schematics they sent me and I I noticed every time I got one of these kits with this carburetor there was a green rubber o-ring that was inside the kit that was not nobody knew what it was okay well, I deciphered it is supposed to go in this hole right here. This is your mid plate. Okay. The rubber o ring was supposed to go in there. For what reason, I have no clue because it was too small to do anything. So now, inside the carburetor, you have your low end side here, which is your needle. And then you got your bellow here, and then you got your high end needle adjustment here. Okay, now you're gonna see this one's way in, it's not out one like one sixteenth, like most of them that I do, you know, because I could not figure out why this carburetor would not work, so that's why I tore it down. And then I thought I'll give you guys a breakdown of what it looks like inside. Now, inside the carburetor, between these throttle plates here is these super, super small. You can't even see it in my hand there. See that? That's your pump. It's just a small little piece of cellophane that goes in between there, which I did find out works with gasoline. So the other one. Has, this one here has the two little, <laughs> let me get a, some light on it here. You'll see the two little flaps over here that flap back and forth across these holes inside the carb right there. When it pulsates, it creates a open and shut situation so now this is the outside of the carb that has their name on it toy and pump system it's just a piece of cellophane with four holes and it uses the pump pressure within this reservoir here to pulsate and draw fuel now, one thing I did learn, the bigger the engine, um, the, the more suction it had. So, like the Toyin V8s, 
Um, you did not need any kind of uh, exhaust return hose to pulsate the fuel tank because all it did was flood it. And and now I know why because it's too SM all small, way too small. When you when you put pressure on this <laughs> right here, it's just going to be a nightmare. It's going to flood the engine. You're going to use way excess fuel. And um, it just, to me, like, they need a, I guess, an education on how carburetors actually work. There's a balance of how much carburation, how much air needs to go into an engine. Apparently, these engine manufacturers have not quite figured it out yet other than one. And that's the Quan Chai V12. <laughs> So, you know, they, they figured out that balance of air to fuel ratio to, to make major power. And they've done that with the V12. So, Barb, now, this is your adjustment needle. And I have spoken about this. Um, a friend who is one of my subscribers actually turned me on to this. <coughs> you cut one coil out of the spring and then you sand down the very edge or surround that edge off because inside this here which i talked about before there's a slot it is rough ground i mean you'll cut your finger if you just slid your you, you'll take skin off so sand that down round the edges round the screw take one millimeter which is about one coil off the screw and put it back in your engine. So now that we've got the basics of the Toyin pump style carb down here, we see that it was a great idea. I mean, they're on to something there and I take my hat off and I applaud their efforts. However, that is just too small. So there's no way you can add additional carburetors to something like a, um, you know, a 3D printed intake manifold here, which is nice. I like that. And the way the manifold is set up, it was well engineered, okay, to go from front wide to back thin, which brings the, it takes the fuel charge and mixes it evenly all the way to the back. However, there's that little hole right there, it's just not enough to feed it. Like this thing could get so much more RPM out of it. And you know, it's just, uh, it'd be a win-win if we could do that. So now you're gonna see, I got some CDIs here and all this stuff. I will get to that in my next video um, because with the changes that are going on in the, in the hobby right now, um, it's going to be wild. And you guys are going to need to, you know, save your money. And uh, today, I just bought two more of these K-Tech overflow bottles from K-Tech Engineering. Um, he has them on eBay. And I will put the link below for that too. So... Anyways, guys, any questions or comments, feel free to hit me up. Guys like you, me, and everybody else out there are trying to put our engineering skills together to figure out why it doesn't rev, why it doesn't run, you know, ignition systems and all this stuff. So, anyways, guys, like I say, put your comments below. I'll let them read them. Love to all. Like, share, subscribe if you want. And I'll catch you later. Adios.